Over the past couple of years, my home brewery has started to look almost like an actual brewery. And it seems like with every new piece of equipment I add, my techniques improve and the beer just keeps getting better and better. But in this video, I'm traveling hundreds of miles away from home and we're going back to basics. We're here in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, and the first thing we need to do is track down some good brewing water. One thing I've noticed is searching for reverse osmosis water online usually pulls up service providers that can install RO systems in your home. But if you search for water store, you can actually find some filling stations. Looks like we found our brewing water. Next up, we need a homebrew shop. And lucky for me, it looks like there's one right by the water store. Now. I'll just go round everything up and we can make some beer. For this beer, I'm using four gallons of spring water in the mash instead of reverse osmosis so I don't have to treat it. And I'll save the rest of the water for sparging. I'm planning on mashing in at 134 Fahrenheit or about 57 Celsius, and then I'll ramp up to my target mash temperature of 147 Fahrenheit or 64 Celsius. For this one, I'm keeping things super simple and going with a smash recipe or single malt and single hop. For the malt, I chose six pounds of Vienna and I'm aiming for an original gravity of 1040. I'll keep mashing this in until everything is nice and saturated and then I'll let things settle for a bit before turning on the pump. So far this Vivor system seems decent for what it costs but there are a couple things like this handle that just aren't fully thought through. In order to use this diffusion plate I gotta take this handle off but it doesn't seem like I'd be able to get it back in because it hits the kettle wall. So I'll just skip the diffusion plate for now and let it recirculate just like this. After an hour at 147, I'm increasing the temperature to 170 Fahrenheit or about 77 Celsius for mash out. And just like that, it's time to yank these grains and move on to a step called the Vorloff. With the basket up and out of the wort, I'm recirculating the wort through the grain bed, which helps with both clarity and mash efficiency. After a few minutes of recirculation, I'm sparging with the rest of the brewing water for a total of 5 gallons of water. Now, let's crank this thing up and get our boil started. Thank you. 
All right, we're up to a full boil and our 60 minute timer starts now. We've been boiling for 45 minutes and it's time for the first hop addition. Here's 28 grams of Amarillo and we're just about finished with the brew day. And just like that, our 60 minute boil is complete. Unfortunately, I don't have a great way to chill this beer down, so my plan is to just let it naturally cool overnight and we'll pitch the yeast in the morning. For this one, I'll be using Philly Sour Yeast and I brought along my tilt hydrometer to keep an eye on the progress. This is a prickly pear cactus and in southwestern states like Arizona, you can find them lining suburban sidewalks, city parks, and even grocery store parking lots. In the summer, they grow beautiful blossoms like these and by fall, they grow these spiky, delicious fruits. After seeing them all over town, I decided this would be the perfect way to finish off this beer. But to remove the thorns, we're gonna need to get creative. With a bit of experimenting and some help from Meg, we learned the easiest way to do this was to basically roast each fruit like a marshmallow until all the spikes were burned off. After they were safe to handle, we cut the skin off and then blended all the fruit into a puree. On the second day of fermentation, I added all the puree to the fermenter and let it ferment until the trip was over. When I got home, I bottled the beer and check out that color. I can't wait to see how this turns out. To recap, this beer started with some spring water and a simple smash recipe using Vienna malt and Amarillo hops. The question is, can I still make great beer without all that fancy gear? Let's find out. It's been three weeks since bottling this prickly pear sour and it looks like I was able to create plenty of carbonation. The color is an absolutely beautiful deep fuchsia with a light pink, almost white head. The aroma reminds me of fruit punch, but I also get a little hint of hoppy bitterness. Going in for a taste, it's nice and fruity and the acidity hits right in front of my ears with that Philly sour punch and it finishes nice and dry with a little bit of like a lavender taste at the end. Prickly pear is kind of hard to describe, but I think fruit punch is pretty close. This is great. Vienna kind of has a residual sweetness that I think pairs well with prickly pear and the dryness of the beer. Looking back on the brew day, 
I'm pleasantly surprised with the Vivor all-in-one brewing system. It came with absolutely everything you need, including a hop spider and an immersion chiller. I just didn't have a way to hook it up to the hose and didn't feel like going to the hardware store. Once I get that sorted out, it'll be even better. My name's Dan, this is Hops and Gnarly. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon.